I married a millionaire after four divorces. When my husband found out about my past, he immediately divorced me because he found out that... When I met Jonathan, it felt like my entire life had finally aligned into something perfect. After a string of four disastrous marriages, each leaving me more disillusioned than the last, Jonathan was a breath of fresh air, a whirlwind romance straight out of a fairy tale. He was a self-made millionaire, charming and attentive in ways my previous husbands had never been. Our courtship was brief but intense, and when he proposed with a dazzling diamond ring, I said yes without hesitation. Our wedding was a grand affair, the kind that dreams are made of. It was held at a picturesque vineyard, surrounded by rolling hills and bathed in the golden glow of the setting sun. I wore a custom-made gown that clung to my figure and sparkled with every step, and Jonathan looked dashing in his tailored tuxedo. The guest list was a who's who of high society, and the reception was a lavish display of wealth and elegance. Everything about that day felt perfect, almost too perfect to be real. As we exchanged our vows, I felt a flutter of excitement mixed with a twinge of fear. This was my fifth marriage, and while I desperately wanted to believe that this time would be different, a small voice in the back of my mind reminded me of my past failures. But as Jonathan looked into my eyes and promised to love me forever, I pushed those doubts aside. This time, I told myself, it would be different. After the wedding, we moved into Jonathan's sprawling mansion on the outskirts of the city. It was a world away from the modest homes and apartments I had lived in before. The mansion was a testament to Jonathan's success, a stunning blend of modern design and classic elegance, complete with manicured gardens, a swimming pool, and even a private cinema. It was the kind of home I had only ever seen in magazines, and now it was mine. Adapting to the high-society lifestyle was exhilarating. Suddenly, I was attending galas, charity events, and exclusive parties. My days were filled with shopping trips to designer boutiques, spa treatments, and lunches at upscale restaurants. Jonathan spared no expense to ensure I had everything I could ever want or need. It was a life of luxury and ease, far removed from the struggles and heartaches of my past. Despite the glitz and glamour, I couldn't shake a lingering sense of unease. Jonathan was the perfect husband, kind, generous, and attentive, but a part of me feared that my past would come back to haunt me. I had never told him about my four previous marriages. It wasn't that I wanted to deceive him, but every time I tried to bring it up, I couldn't find the words. I was terrified that revealing my past would shatter the perfect life we had built together. One evening, as we lounged by the pool with a glass of champagne, Jonathan looked at me with a serious expression. Darling, there's something I've been meaning to ask you, he said, setting his glass down. You've never really talked about your past relationships. I know it's a sensitive topic, but I want us to be honest with each other. My heart skipped a beat. This was the moment I had been dreading. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves. Jonathan, there's something I need to tell you. I began, my voice trembling. I've been married before. Four times, actually. Jonathan's eyes widened in surprise, and for a moment there was silence. I watched his expression change, a mix of shock and confusion crossing his face. Four times? He repeated, his voice barely above a whisper. Yes, I said, feeling the weight of my confession. I know it sounds terrible, but I want you to understand that those marriages were mistakes. They weren't right for me, and I've learned from each of them. I love you, Jonathan, and I want this to work. He looked away, staring into the distance as he processed what I had just told him. The silence was deafening, and I felt a knot of fear tightening in my stomach. Finally, he turned back to me, his expression unreadable. Why didn't you tell me this before? He asked, his voice calm but tinged with hurt. I was afraid, I admitted, tears welling up in my eyes. Afraid that you would see me differently that you would think less of me. I didn't want my past to ruin what we have. Jonathan sighed, running a hand through his hair. I wish you had been honest with me from the beginning, but I understand why you were scared. We all have our pasts, and I'm not perfect either. Relief washed over me, and I reached out to take his hand. Thank you for understanding. I promise you, Jonathan, I'm committed to making this marriage work. I love you more than anything. He squeezed my hand offering me a small, reassuring smile. I love you too, but let's promise to always be honest with each other from now on. No more secrets. Deal, I said, smiling through my tears. For a while, it seemed like everything would be okay. Jonathan and I continued to build our life together, and I threw myself into my new role as a socialite. We traveled, hosted lavish parties, and enjoyed the many luxuries that his wealth afforded us. 
But the shadow of my past lingered, and I couldn't shake the feeling that it was only a matter of time before it caught up with me. Little did I know that the revelation of my previous marriages was just the beginning. There was another secret, one that I had buried even deeper, and its discovery would have far-reaching consequences. As I basked in the glow of my new life, I remained blissfully unaware that everything I had worked so hard to build was about to come crashing down. The days following my confession to Jonathan were tense. Though he had promised to understand, a part of me feared that the knowledge of my four failed marriages would forever taint our relationship. Nevertheless, I found solace in the belief that honesty was the best path forward. But the secrets of my past ran deeper than just my previous divorces. Each marriage had left its scars, and each one had its own story of heartbreak and mistakes that I was too ashamed to revisit. Now that I had opened the door to my past, I couldn't help but reflect on the choices that had led me here. My first marriage had been a youthful mistake, a whirlwind romance with a man named Jack who had seemed like my knight in shining armor. We were both young and impulsive, and the initial spark quickly faded into routine and disillusionment. Jack was a good man, but we were fundamentally incompatible. We fought constantly, and after two years of trying to make it work, we agreed to part ways amicably. The second marriage was to Tom, a charismatic entrepreneur who swept me off my feet with his grand ambitions and larger-than-life personality. Our marriage was a roller coaster of highs and lows, punctuated by his bouts of infidelity and my desperate attempts to keep us together. When he left me for another woman, I was devastated but ultimately relieved to be free from the turmoil. My third husband, Mark, was a quiet, steady man who promised stability after the chaos of my previous relationships. For a time, I thought I had found what I was looking for, but as the years passed, I realized that our marriage was built on convenience rather than love. We grew apart, living parallel lives under the same roof until we finally agreed to divorce. My fourth marriage to Paul was perhaps the most painful. Paul was charming and affectionate, and I fell deeply in love with him. But he had a dark side, a temper that flared into violent outbursts. I endured his abuse for years, convincing myself that things would get better. When I finally found the courage to leave, I swore I would never let myself be trapped in such a situation again. Jonathan had seemed like the answer to all my prayers, a man who could offer me the stability, love, and security I had always craved. But now that he knew about my past, I worried that he would see me as damaged goods, unworthy of his love and trust. One evening, as we sat in the living room, Jonathan looked at me with a mixture of curiosity and concern. Can you tell me more about your previous marriages? he asked gently. I want to understand what you went through. Taking a deep breath, I began to recount the stories of my past. I told him about Jack and our youthful mistakes, Tom and his infidelities, Mark and our empty marriage, and Paul's abuse. With each story, Jonathan listened intently, his expression a blend of empathy and sorrow. I'm sorry you had to go through all that, he said when I had finished, but it's made you the strong person you are today. I respect you even more for surviving all of that. His words brought tears to my eyes, and I hugged him tightly. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm so grateful to have you in my life. For a while, it seemed like we had moved past the revelations of my past. We settled back into our routine, and I continued to immerse myself in the glamorous world Jonathan had introduced me to. I attended charity events, mingled with high society figures, and enjoyed the luxuries that came with being married to a millionaire. But beneath the surface, I knew that the shadow of my past still loomed. There was one secret I had not yet shared with Jonathan, a secret so deep and painful that I had buried it even from myself. It was a secret that, if discovered, could unravel everything we had built together. The catalyst for its revelation came unexpectedly. One afternoon, as I was sorting through some old boxes in the attic, I stumbled upon a photo album from my time with Paul. As I flipped through the pages, memories of those dark days came flooding back, and I felt a pang of guilt and shame. One photo in particular caught my eye, a picture of me with Paul and a child. My hands trembled as I traced the outline of the child's face. This was the secret I'd kept hidden for so long. My heart raced as I realized that Jonathan had no idea about the existence of my child from my marriage to Paul. The child I had given up for adoption in a desperate attempt to protect him from Paul's violence— as I stared at the photo, tears streaming down my face, I knew that I couldn't keep this secret any longer. Jonathan deserved to know the truth, no matter how painful it was. I had to find the courage to tell him about the child I had given up, and the reasons behind my decision. 
That evening, I waited for Jonathan to come home, my heart pounding with anxiety. When he walked through the door, I took a deep breath and prepared myself for the hardest conversation of my life. Jonathan, there's something I need to tell you, I began, my voice shaking. Something I should have told you from the beginning. He looked at me with concern, sensing the gravity of my words. What is it, darling? I took his hand and led him to the living room where we sat down together. When I was married to Paul, I had a child, a son, but I gave him up for adoption because I couldn't bear the thought of him growing up in that abusive environment. I've tried to forget, to move on, but I can't. It's a part of my past that I've kept hidden for so long. Jonathan's face went pale, and he pulled his hand away from mine. You had a child, and you never told me. I'm so sorry, I whispered, tears streaming down my face. I was ashamed, and I didn't want you to see me differently, but I can't keep the secret anymore. Jonathan stood up, pacing the room as he tried to process what I had just told him. I don't know what to say, he muttered. I need some time to think. He left the house without another word, leaving me alone with my thoughts and my guilt. The secret I had kept hidden for so long had finally come to light, and I had no idea what the consequences would be. The next few days were a blur of anxiety and uncertainty. Jonathan avoided me, spending long hours at work and coming home late. I tried to give him space, hoping that he would find a way to forgive me, but deep down, I knew that our relationship would never be the same. The secret of my past had shattered the trust between us, and I feared that the life we had built together was crumbling before my eyes. One evening, Jonathan finally came home early. He looked exhausted, his eyes filled with sadness. He sat down next to me on the couch, taking my hand in his. I've been thinking a lot about what you told me, he said quietly, and I understand why you did what you did. But I can't ignore the fact that you kept such a huge secret from me. I need some time to figure out where we go from here. Tears welled up in my eyes as I nodded, understanding the weight of his words. I'm so sorry, Jonathan. I never wanted to hurt you. I know, he replied, his voice soft. But we need to rebuild the trust between us. It's going to take time. As we sat there in silence, I realized that the road ahead would be long and difficult. But I was determined to fight for our relationship, to prove that our love was worth saving. The secrets of my past had been laid bare and now it was up to us to decide whether we could overcome them. Our journey was far from over, but I held on to the hope that, together, we could find a way to heal and move forward. Despite Jonathan's reassurance that we could work through my past, the atmosphere in our home grew increasingly tense. The elephant in the room, my son who I had given up for adoption, cast a long shadow over our lives. Jonathan was distant, spending more time at the office or locked away in his study. I tried to be patient to give him the space he needed, but the uncertainty was tearing me apart. One evening, as I was preparing dinner, Jonathan walked into the kitchen with a solemn expression. We need to talk, he said, his voice devoid of its usual warmth. I set down the knife I was using and turned to face him, my heart pounding. What is it? Jonathan took a deep breath, avoiding my eyes. I hired a private investigator to look into your past, he confessed. I needed to know everything. His words hit me like a punch to the gut. You what? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. I'm sorry, but I had to know, he continued, finally meeting my gaze. And there's something I found out that we need to discuss. Fear gripped me as I watched him pull a folder from his briefcase. He opened it and handed me a stack of documents. As I skimmed through them, my blood ran cold. There were records, photos, and letters. All evidence of my past laid out in excruciating detail. But one document stood out, a legal paper that detailed the adoption of my son, including the names of his adoptive parents. Jonathan had found my son's new family. I found them, he said quietly. Your son is living with a family in the next state. They seem like good people. Tears filled my eyes as I looked at the paper, my hands trembling. Why did you do this, Jonathan? Why couldn't you just talk to me? I needed the truth he replied, his voice cracking. I love you, but I can't build a life with someone who hides such important parts of their past. I had to know what I was dealing with. I understand, I whispered, feeling the weight of my secrets crushing me. But what does this mean for us? Jonathan sighed, running a hand through his hair. I don't know. I need time to process all of this. I need to figure out if I can move past it. 
The uncertainty hung between us like a dark cloud. The man I loved, the life we had built together, was now in jeopardy because of the secrets I had kept buried for so long. Over the next few days, the tension in our home became unbearable. Jonathan's silence was deafening, and I found myself constantly on edge, waiting for the other shoe to drop. One evening, unable to take it any longer, I decided to confront him. Jonathan, we need to talk about this, I said, finding him in his study. We can't keep avoiding each other. He looked up from his work, his expression weary. I know, it's just a lot to take in. I understand that, I replied, sitting down across from him, but we need to figure out what we're going to do. I can't live in this limbo. Jonathan sighed, leaning back in his chair. I've been thinking about it a lot, and I'm not sure I can get past this. The lies, the secrets, it's too much. Tears welled up in my eyes as I listened to his words. So what are you saying? I'm saying that I think we need to take a break, he said, his voice pained. I need time to figure out if I can move forward with you, knowing everything I know now. The thought of losing him was unbearable, but I knew I had to respect his decision. If that's what you need, I understand, I said softly. But please know that I love you, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make this work. Jonathan nodded, his eyes filled with sadness. I know you are, and I love you too, but right now, I need space. He left the house that night, leaving me alone with my thoughts and my regrets. The silence was overwhelming, and I found myself replaying our conversation over and over in my mind, wondering if there was something I could have done differently. The next few weeks were some of the hardest of my life. Jonathan's absence was a constant reminder of the fragility of our relationship. I tried to focus on rebuilding my life, seeking solace in friends and family, but the pain of our separation was always there, lurking in the background. One afternoon as I was walking through the park, my phone buzzed with a message from Jonathan. My heart raced as I read his words, a mix of hope and fear flooding through me. Can we meet? I think we need to talk. We agreed to meet at a small cafe downtown, a place that had once been our favorite spot. As I walked in, I saw him sitting at a corner table, looking tired and conflicted. I took a deep breath and approached him, my heart pounding. Hi, I said softly, sitting down across from him. Hi, he replied, offering a small smile. Thanks for coming. We sat in awkward silence for a moment before he spoke again. I've been doing a lot of thinking and I've come to a decision. I braced myself my hands gripping the edge of the table. What is it? Jonathan took a deep breath, his eyes meeting mine. I've decided that I can't move past this. The trust is gone and I don't think we can rebuild it. I'm filing for divorce. The words hit me like a punch to the gut and I felt tears streaming down my face. Jonathan, please don't do this. I love you. We can work through this. He shook his head, his expression filled with sorrow. I'm sorry, but I've made up my mind. I hope you can find happiness, but I can't be a part of this anymore. With that, he stood up and walked out of the cafe, leaving me alone and heartbroken. The life I had built with him, the dreams we had shared, were now shattered. As I sat there trying to process what had just happened, I realized that I had a choice to make. I could let this break me, or I could find the strength to move forward. I had faced so many challenges in my life, and I knew that I had the resilience to overcome this too. Wiping away my tears, I stood up and walked out of the cafe, determined to rebuild my life once again. The road ahead would be difficult, but I was ready to face it with the same strength and courage that had carried me through all my past trials. My journey was far from over, and I knew that there would be more challenges to come. But as long as I held on to hope and stayed true to myself, I believed that I could find happiness and love once again. Jonathan's decision to divorce me left me devastated, but I had no choice but to face the reality of my situation. The following days were a whirlwind of emotions, grief, anger, and a deep sense of loss. The life I had built with him, the dreams we had shared, all seemed to crumble before my eyes. Jonathan wasted no time in starting the divorce proceedings. I received the papers within a week, and the cold, impersonal language of the legal document made the situation all the more real. The man who had once promised me forever was now seeking to end our marriage, and I had to confront the fact that my past had caught up with me in the most brutal way possible. Moving out of the mansion was a heartbreaking experience. Each room held memories of happier times, and packing up my belongings felt like tearing pieces of myself away. Friends and family offered their support, helping me through the painful process, 
but the sense of loss was overwhelming. As I stood in the empty living room, looking around at the bare walls and vacant spaces, I couldn't help but reflect on how quickly my life had changed. Just a few months ago, I had been living a fairy tale, and now I was starting over once again. Finding a new place to live was challenging. I moved into a modest apartment, a far cry from the luxury I had grown accustomed to, but it was a start. I focused on rebuilding my life, finding a job to support myself, and establishing a routine that gave me a sense of stability. The legal proceedings were swift and efficient, thanks to Jonathan's wealth and influence. We agreed on a settlement that was fair, but it was clear that he wanted to close this chapter of his life as quickly as possible. I signed the papers with a heavy heart, knowing that our marriage was officially over. One evening, as I sat in my new apartment, I found myself reflecting on my journey. I had been married five times, each ending in heartbreak, and I couldn't help but wonder if I was destined to be alone. But then I remembered the strength that had carried me through each challenge, the resilience that had helped me rebuild my life time and time again. I knew I couldn't let this defeat me. I had to find a way to move forward, to heal from the pain, and build a future that was truly my own. I reached out to a therapist seeking help to process my emotions and gain insight into my patterns of behavior. The sessions were difficult, forcing me to confront my deepest fears and insecurities, but they also brought a sense of clarity and self-awareness. Through therapy, I began to understand the reasons behind my failed marriages. Each relationship had taught me valuable lessons, but I had also made mistakes that I needed to acknowledge and learn from. I realized that I had often lost myself in my relationships, seeking validation and security from my partners rather than finding it within myself. I started focusing on my own growth and development. I took up new hobbies, enrolled in courses to advance my career, and reconnected with friends I had lost touch with. I also began volunteering at a local shelter, finding fulfillment in helping others and giving back to the community. One day, as I was sorting through some old boxes, I came across the photo album that had sparked the revelation of my past. I flipped through the pages, pausing at the picture of me with Paul and our son. Tears welled up in my eyes as I thought about the child I had given up, the pain and regret that still lingered. I decided to reach out to the adoption agency, hoping to learn more about my son's life and perhaps even reconnect with him. It was a long shot, but I knew I had to try. The agency was helpful, providing me with information about his adoptive family and their willingness to allow contact. I wrote a heartfelt letter, explaining my reasons for giving him up and expressing my desire to know him if he was open to it. Weeks passed, and I received a response from his adoptive parents. They were kind and understanding and they agreed to facilitate a meeting if my son was willing. My heart raced with a mix of hope and fear as I awaited his decision. In the meantime, I continued to work on myself, finding strength and resilience in the process. I realized that I had the power to create a life that was fulfilling and meaningful, regardless of my past mistakes and failures. One evening as I was preparing dinner, my phone buzzed with a message. It was from the adoption agency informing me that my son wanted to meet me. My heart leaped with joy and nervousness as I read the message, tears streaming down my face. The day of our meeting arrived, and I found myself at a small cafe, anxiously waiting for him to arrive. When he walked in, I recognized him immediately, the same eyes, the same smile. He approached me with a hesitant but hopeful expression. Hi, he said softly, taking a seat across from me. Hi, I replied, my voice trembling with emotion. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me. He nodded, looking down at his hands. I've always wondered about you. I'm glad we're finally getting a chance to talk. We spent the next few hours talking, sharing stories and getting to know each other. It was a surreal experience, meeting the child I had given up so many years ago, but it was also incredibly healing. I explained my reasons for giving him up, and he listened with understanding and compassion. As we parted ways, he gave me a hug and I felt a sense of closure and hope that I had never experienced before. Reconnecting with my son was a pivotal moment in my journey, a reminder that even the most painful parts of our past can lead to new beginnings. I returned to my apartment that evening, feeling a renewed sense of purpose and strength. The road ahead was still uncertain, but I knew that I had the resilience to face whatever challenges came my way. My journey was far from over, but I was ready to embrace the future with hope and determination. The immediate divorce from Jonathan had been a painful and difficult experience, but it had also been a catalyst for growth and self-discovery. 
I had learned valuable lessons about love, resilience, and the importance of being true to oneself. As I looked toward the future, I felt a sense of peace and optimism, knowing that I had the strength to create a life that was truly my own. Life without Jonathan was a mix of newfound freedom and lingering pain. I continued my journey of self-discovery, slowly rebuilding my life and focusing on my personal growth. The therapeutic sessions, volunteer work, and new hobbies provided a sense of purpose and fulfillment. However, the echo of my past mistakes and the fear of repeating them always lingered in the back of my mind. One evening while sorting through my bookshelf, I found a journal I had kept during my marriage to Paul. Curious, I flipped through the pages, reliving the moments of fear and turmoil that had defined that period of my life. The entries were filled with anguish and regret, but they also highlighted the strength and resilience I had developed over time. Reading those words, I realized how far I had come. Despite the pain and heartbreak, I had survived and grown stronger. I had faced my demons and emerged on the other side with a clearer understanding of who I was and what I wanted in life. It was a powerful moment of self-realization that filled me with a sense of empowerment. I took out a fresh journal and began writing, this time focusing on the lessons I had learned from each of my marriages. I acknowledged my mistakes, but I also celebrated my growth. I wrote about the importance of self-love and the need to find validation within myself rather than from others. It was a cathartic process that helped me to heal and move forward. One weekend, I decided to take a solo trip to the mountains, a place I had always found peace and solace. The crisp air and serene landscape provided the perfect backdrop for reflection. As I hiked through the trails, I thought about the patterns in my past relationships and the reasons they had failed. I realized that I had often lost myself in the pursuit of love, compromising my own needs and desires to please my partners. Determined to break this cycle, I made a promise to myself. I would prioritize my own happiness and well-being above all else. I would seek out relationships that complemented my life rather than defined it, and I would never again lose sight of who I was. Returning from the trip, I felt a renewed sense of purpose and clarity. I focused on building a life that was rich and fulfilling on my own terms. I continued to volunteer, finding joy in helping others. I pursued my career with passion and dedication, striving to achieve my professional goals. I also nurtured my relationships with friends and family, surrounding myself with positive influences. One day, as I was working at the shelter, I received a call from my son. We had kept in touch since our first meeting, gradually building a relationship that was both healing and rewarding. He wanted to visit me, and I eagerly agreed. When he arrived, we spent the day exploring the city, sharing stories, and deepening our bond. He told me about his adoptive family, his dreams, and his struggles. I shared my own experiences, offering support and advice. It was a beautiful connection that brought a sense of wholeness to my life. That evening, as we sat on the porch, watching the sunset, I felt a deep sense of contentment. My journey had been long and filled with challenges, but I had found a way to navigate through the darkness and emerge stronger. I had learned the importance of self-love, resilience, and the power of facing one's past. As I looked at my son, I felt a surge of pride and gratitude. He was a testament to my strength and the choices I had made. Our relationship was a precious gift, a reminder that even the most painful decisions can lead to beautiful outcomes. Life was still a journey, with its ups and downs, but I was ready to face whatever came my way. I had found my inner strength and learned to value myself. And most importantly, I had discovered that true happiness comes from within. The realization that my past did not define me, but rather shaped me into the person I was today, was liberating. I was ready to embrace the future with open arms, confident in my ability to create a life that was fulfilling and true to who I was. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the mountains, I whispered a silent promise to myself. I would continue to grow, to learn, and to love, not just others, but myself as well. And in that moment, I knew that I was finally on the path to true happiness. With the realization of my self-worth and the patterns I needed to break, I embarked on a journey of redemption. It was time to build a life that was not just a response to my past, but a testament to my growth and resilience. Each day was a step forward, and with each step I felt more in control of my destiny. I started by finding stability in my career. I accepted a position at a nonprofit organization focused on helping women and children in crisis. It was a cause close to my heart, and I poured my energy into my work, finding fulfillment and making a difference in the lives of others. 
The sense of purpose and accomplishment was a balm for my soul, helping to heal the wounds of my past. One morning, as I prepared for a meeting at the nonprofit, I received a call from a familiar number. It was Jonathan. My heart skipped a beat, a mix of curiosity and apprehension washing over me. Why was he reaching out now? Hello? I answered, trying to keep my voice steady. Hi, Anna, Jonathan replied, his voice tinged with hesitation. I've been thinking a lot about everything, and I realized I owe you an apology. Can we meet for coffee and talk? Surprised, I agreed. We arranged to meet at a quaint cafe downtown, the same one where he had asked for a divorce. As I walked in, memories of our past and the pain of our separation flooded back, but I pushed them aside, focusing on the present. Jonathan stood up as I approached, offering a small, tentative smile. Thank you for meeting me, he said, motioning for me to sit. We ordered our drinks and settled into a comfortable silence before he finally spoke. Anna, I've had a lot of time to reflect, and I realize I was wrong to handle things the way I did. I shouldn't have hired an investigator behind your back or left you the way I did. I'm truly sorry for the pain I caused you. His apology was unexpected, and it took me a moment to find my words. Thank you, Jonathan. That means a lot. I'm sorry, too, for not being up front with you from the beginning. I've learned a lot since then. We spent the next hour talking openly, sharing the lessons we had learned and the growth we had experienced. It was a cathartic conversation, and by the end of it, I felt a sense of closure and peace. We parted on good terms, both acknowledging that while our paths had diverged, they had also led us to important self-discoveries. Back at work, I channeled my renewed sense of purpose into helping the women at the shelter. I connected with them on a personal level, sharing my own experiences and offering support and guidance. Each success story, each woman who found her strength, reaffirmed my own journey of redemption. One evening as I was leaving the shelter, I ran into an old friend, Sarah. We had lost touch over the years, but seeing her again felt like a reunion with a part of my past I had cherished. We decided to catch up over dinner. As we talked, I shared my story my marriages, the divorce from Jonathan, and my journey to self-discovery. Sarah listened intently, her eyes filled with empathy and admiration. Anna, you've been through so much, but look at you now, she said, her voice filled with warmth. You found your strength and purpose. I'm so proud of you. Her words brought tears to my eyes. Thank you, Sarah. It's been a long journey, but I'm finally in a place where I feel happy and fulfilled. As our dinner came to an end, Sarah mentioned an upcoming charity event she was organizing, inviting me to join her. It was a fundraiser for survivors of domestic abuse, and I eagerly agreed to help. The event was a resounding success. I reconnected with old friends, made new ones, and shared my story with others who had faced similar challenges. It was a night of solidarity, hope, and the power of redemption. At the end of the evening, I stood on the balcony, looking out at the city lights. The sense of peace and fulfillment was overwhelming. I had come full circle, finding strength in my past and using it to build a brighter future. My journey of redemption was ongoing, but I had learned to embrace it with grace and resilience. Each day was an opportunity to grow, to love, and to make a difference. I was no longer defined by my past mistakes, but by the strength I had found within myself. As I walked back to my apartment that night, I felt a deep sense of contentment. I had faced my demons, found my purpose, and was living a life that was true to who I was. The road ahead was still uncertain, but I was ready to face it with confidence and hope. My story was one of redemption, a testament to the power of self-love and resilience. I had discovered that true happiness comes from within, and I was determined to continue building a life that reflected that truth. As I settled into my new life, I found that the journey of self-improvement and redemption was ongoing. Every day presented new obstacles, but I faced them with a newfound resilience and determination. My work at the nonprofit was fulfilling, but it also brought its own set of challenges. The stories of the women and children I worked with were heart-wrenching, and their struggles often reminded me of my own past. One morning, as I was preparing for a board meeting, I received a call from the shelter. A young woman named Emily had just arrived, escaping an abusive relationship with nothing but the clothes on her back. Her story hit close to home and I felt a deep sense of empathy and responsibility. I rushed to the shelter, finding Emily in the common room, looking frightened and lost. I sat down next to her, offering a warm smile. Hi, Emily. I'm Anna. I'm here to help you. 
She looked at me with tear-filled eyes. Thank you. I didn't know where else to go. You're safe here, I assured her, gently taking her hand. We'll help you get back on your feet. Over the next few weeks, I worked closely with Emily, helping her find housing, a job, and emotional support. Her journey was not unlike my own, and I saw in her the same strength and resilience that had carried me through my darkest times. Seeing her progress was incredibly rewarding and reminded me why I had chosen this path. Outside of work, I continued to focus on my personal growth. I joined a local yoga class, finding peace and balance through the practice. The physical and mental discipline it required helped me stay centered, even when life's challenges threatened to overwhelm me. One evening, as I was leaving the yoga studio, I bumped into an old acquaintance, Michael. We had known each other in college but had lost touch over the years. Seeing him again was a pleasant surprise, and we decided to catch up over coffee. As we talked, I found myself opening up about my journey, the failed marriages, the divorce from Jonathan, and my work at the nonprofit. Michael listened with genuine interest and compassion, sharing his own experiences and challenges. You've been through so much, Anna, he said, his eyes reflecting admiration. But you've turned your life around and are doing incredible work. That's truly inspiring. His words touched me deeply. Thank you, Michael. It hasn't been easy, but I've learned a lot about myself along the way. We continued to see each other, and our friendship gradually blossomed into something more. Michael was kind, supportive, and understanding, everything I had hoped for in a partner. Our relationship was built on a foundation of mutual respect and honesty, and it felt different from any I had experienced before. Despite the joy of my new relationship, I remained committed to my personal growth and the mission of the nonprofit. There were days when the weight of my past still lingered, but I faced each challenge with the knowledge that I had the strength to overcome it. One particularly difficult day, I received a call from my son's adoptive parents. They were struggling with some issues at home and asked if I could help. I immediately agreed, feeling a sense of duty and love for my son. I spent the weekend with them, offering support and guidance. It was a challenging but rewarding experience, and it brought us closer together. My son and I had built a strong bond, and being able to help his family was a way to give back and show my gratitude for the life they had provided him. As I drove back to my apartment, I reflected on the obstacles I'd overcome and the strength I had found within myself. My journey was far from over, but I was proud of the progress I had made. I had faced my past, learned from my mistakes, and built a life that was fulfilling and true to who I was. Each day was a new opportunity to grow, to love, and to make a difference. The obstacles I encountered were not roadblocks, but stepping stones, guiding me toward a brighter future. With each challenge, I became stronger and more resilient, confident in my ability to overcome anything life threw my way. As I walked into my apartment that evening, I felt a deep sense of peace and fulfillment. I had built a life that was rich in love, purpose, and resilience. My journey was one of continuous growth, and I was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, knowing that I had the strength to overcome them. Life had settled into a comfortable rhythm. My relationship with Michael was blossoming, my work at the nonprofit was fulfilling, and I was surrounded by a supportive community of friends and family. The journey of self-discovery and healing had brought me to a place of acceptance of my past, my choices, and myself. One Saturday, Michael and I decided to spend the day volunteering at a community event organized by the nonprofit. It was a family-friendly fair with activities for children, food stalls, and entertainment. The goal was to raise awareness and funds for the shelter, and the turnout was incredible. As we worked side by side, setting up booths and greeting attendees, I felt a deep sense of gratitude. This was the life I had worked so hard to build, a life filled with purpose, love, and a sense of community. At one point, I saw Emily, the young woman I had helped at the shelter, laughing with her new friends. She looked happy and confident, a stark contrast to the frightened person I had first met. Seeing her thriving was a powerful reminder of the impact we could have on others when we shared our strength and compassion. Later in the day, as Michael and I took a break, we found a quiet spot under a tree. We sat down, enjoying the festive atmosphere around us. You've done amazing work here, Anna, Michael said, taking my hand. You've touched so many lives, including mine. His words brought tears to my eyes. Thank you, Michael. I couldn't have done it without the support of people like you. We sat in comfortable silence for a moment, watching the children play and the community come together. It was a beautiful sight, 
a testament to the power of resilience and the importance of giving back. As the day drew to a close, the event was deemed a success. We had raised significant funds for the shelter, and the sense of camaraderie and shared purpose was palpable. It was a reminder that, despite the challenges we faced, we were stronger together. That evening, as we walked back to my apartment, Michael turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Anna, I've been thinking about our future. I love you, and I want to build a life with you. What do you think about us moving in together? His words filled me with a mix of excitement and trepidation. Moving in together was a big step, but it felt right. We had both grown so much, and our relationship was built on a strong foundation of trust and mutual respect. I'd love that, Michael, I replied, smiling. I think we're ready. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of packing, planning, and moving. We found a cozy apartment that suited both of our needs, and the process of merging our lives brought us even closer together. It was a new chapter, filled with promise and hope. As we settled into our new home, I reflected on the journey that had brought me here. I had faced countless obstacles, but each challenge had taught me valuable lessons and helped me grow stronger. I had found acceptance in my past and the choices I had made, and I had built a life that was fulfilling and meaningful. One evening, as we sat on the balcony of our new apartment watching the sunset, Michael turned to me with a smile. I'm so glad we found each other, Anna. Our journey hasn't been easy, but it's been worth it. I nodded, feeling a deep sense of contentment. It has, and I'm grateful for every moment. We clinked our glasses, toasting to our new beginning. The future was still uncertain, but I was confident in our ability to face whatever came our way. Together, we had built a life filled with love, purpose, and acceptance. As the stars began to twinkle in the night sky, I felt a profound sense of peace. My journey had been long and filled with challenges, but it had also been incredibly rewarding. I had found acceptance within myself and built a life that was true to who I was. The road ahead would undoubtedly bring new obstacles, but I was ready to face them with Michael by my side. Our journey was one of resilience, love, and the unwavering belief that we could overcome anything together. As I looked out at the city lights, I whispered a silent promise to myself. I would continue to grow, to learn, and to love, not just others, but myself as well. And in that moment, I knew that I was finally on the path to true happiness and acceptance. As the months passed, the rhythm of our new life together brought a sense of peace and fulfillment, Michael and I had created a home that was filled with love, laughter, and mutual respect. We navigated the ups and downs of daily life with a sense of partnership and understanding that I had never experienced before. It was a testament to how far I had come and how much I had grown. One evening, after a particularly long day at the nonprofit, I came home to find Michael preparing dinner. The smell of his famous lasagna filled the apartment and the sight of him in the kitchen brought a smile to my face. Hey you, he said, looking up and grinning. How was your day? Exhausting but rewarding, I replied, setting down my bag and joining him. Emily got a promotion at her new job. She came by to tell me and she's so happy. It was incredible to see. That's wonderful, Michael said, giving me a quick kiss. You've done amazing work, Anna. You should be proud of yourself. As we sat down to dinner, we talked about our days, our plans for the future, and the small joys that filled our lives. It was in these moments that I truly appreciated the journey I had taken. Each step, each challenge, had led me to this place of contentment and love. After dinner, we settled on the couch, a cozy fire crackling in the background. Michael handed me a glass of wine and wrapped his arm around me. You know, Anna, I've been thinking a lot about everything you've been through. Your resilience is incredible. You've turned your life around in ways that most people can only dream of. His words brought tears to my eyes. Thank you, Michael. It hasn't been easy, but I've learned so much, and having you by my side has made all the difference. We sat in comfortable silence for a while, simply enjoying each other's presence. The firelight danced on the walls, casting a warm glow over the room. It was a moment of reflection, a time to appreciate the journey we had taken and the love we had found. My mind wandered to the past, to the marriages that had ended in heartbreak, the mistakes I had made, and the lessons I had learned. Each experience had shaped me, had taught me the value of self-love and resilience. I realized that without those struggles, I wouldn't be the person I was today. I thought about the women I had helped at the shelter, the strength they had shown in the face of adversity. 
Their stories were a constant reminder of the power of resilience and the importance of supporting one another. Emily's success was just one of many, and knowing that I had played a part in her journey brought me immense satisfaction. As the night grew darker, Michael and I talked about our hopes and dreams for the future. We discussed the possibility of starting a family, of traveling, and of continuing to build a life that was meaningful and fulfilling. It was a conversation filled with optimism and hope, and it left me feeling more connected to him than ever before. Later, as I lay in bed, I reflected on the incredible journey I had taken. From the depths of despair and heartbreak, I had risen to build a life that was rich in love and purpose. I had found acceptance within myself and had learned to value my own worth. The obstacles I had faced had only made me stronger, and the love I had found with Michael was a testament to the resilience and growth I had achieved. My journey was far from over, but I was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. I had learned that true happiness comes from within, from the strength and love that we nurture in ourselves. With Michael by my side, I felt ready to embrace the future with open arms, confident in our ability to create a life filled with joy and fulfillment. As I drifted off to sleep, I whispered a silent promise to myself, to continue growing, learning, and loving, to face each day with resilience and hope, and to cherish the incredible journey that had brought me to this moment of peace and happiness. My story was one of strength and redemption, and I was excited to see where the future would lead us next. As the years went by, the life Michael and I built together grew stronger, richer, and more fulfilling. Our relationship was a source of endless joy, and the love and respect we had for each other deepened with every passing day. We continued to support each other's dreams and navigate the challenges of life as a team, always with the knowledge that we had found something truly special. One spring morning, we found ourselves sitting on the porch of our home, sipping coffee and enjoying the first warm breezes of the season. The garden we had tended together was blooming with vibrant flowers, a testament to the care and attention we had poured into it, much like our relationship. As we sat there reflecting on our journey, Michael turned to me with a thoughtful expression. You know, Anna, I've been thinking about writing a book, he said a story about resilience, love, and the incredible strength people can find within themselves. I smiled, feeling a rush of warmth. That sounds wonderful, Michael. You've always had a way with words. I want to include your story, he continued. The way you've turned your life around, the strength you've shown, it's incredibly inspiring. I think people could learn a lot from it. His words touched me deeply. I'd be honored, I replied, tears welling up in my eyes. If my story can help others find their own strength and resilience, then it's worth sharing. We spent the next few weeks working on the book together, recounting the trials and triumphs that had defined my journey. It was a cathartic process, and as we wrote, I felt a sense of closure and acceptance. My past no longer felt like a series of mistakes, but a tapestry of experiences that had led me to where I was meant to be. During this time, the nonprofit continued to thrive. We expanded our programs, reached more people, and made a tangible difference in the community. Emily, who had become a close friend, joined the organization as a full-time staff member. Her journey from a frightened woman seeking refuge to a confident advocate for others was a testament to the transformative power of love and support. One evening, as we were celebrating another successful fundraiser, Emily pulled me aside. Anna, I want you to know how much you've changed my life, she said, her eyes shining with gratitude. Your support gave me the strength to rebuild and find my purpose. I'll never be able to thank you enough. Her words filled me with pride and humility. You found that strength within yourself, Emily. I'm just grateful I could help you see it. As our book neared completion, Michael and I decided to host a small gathering to celebrate. We invited close friends, family, and colleagues, creating an evening filled with warmth and camaraderie. As we raised our glasses to toast the book's upcoming release, I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude for the incredible journey I had taken. Standing on the porch, looking out at the smiling faces of those who had supported and loved me, I realized how far I had come. My past, once a source of pain and regret, had become a foundation for growth and resilience. I'd learned to value myself, to embrace my strengths and flaws, and to build a life that was rich in love and purpose. That night, as Michael and I sat together under the stars, I felt a deep sense of peace. Our journey had been filled with challenges, 
but it had also brought us closer and strengthened our bond. The future was still uncertain, but I was ready to face it with confidence and hope. To everyone who has followed my story, thank you for being a part of this incredible journey. Your support and encouragement have meant the world to me. As I look to the future, I invite you to reflect on your own stories of resilience, love, and hope. Together we can celebrate the beauty of life's journey and the incredible strength of the human spirit. What dreams are you working towards? What challenges have you overcome to get where you are today? Share your stories with us. We'd love to hear them. Thank you for reading, and may your own journey be filled with love, hope, and endless possibilities.